Are you seeing a lot of slash feed URLs in your Google Search Console and wondering where did these come from? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can remove these URLs from your Search Console. Let's begin. Now, to answer the first part of your question, where did these slash feed URLs come from? The answer is WordPress. If you are a WordPress based publisher, these URLs are generated by WordPress themselves for RSS feeds. This feature is enabled by default and there's no switch that you can hit and stop WordPress from doing it. However, there are plugins that can help you do just that. Today, I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial to help you remove these slash feed URLs from Google Search Console and reduce the amount of errors that are being reported there. So in my example, these slash feed URLs are excluded by the noindex tag, but Google is still crawling it. And this is not the best use of Google's crawl resources. You would rather want the crawl bot to crawl pages that are gonna bring you traffic and pages that are gonna help you rank better. So today we're gonna to use a plugin to stop these slash feed URLs from being presented to Google crawler itself. So in order to disable this slash feed URLs, there's a simple plugin it's called disable everything. You can install that and then disable it. So for installing that, I would need you to go to the WordPress dashboard. Once you're on your WordPress dashboard, scroll down and go to plugins and add a new plugin. Over here, I would want you to search for disable everything. The first URL by desk IT team, that's the one you need to install. Go ahead, click install and activate. Now that this plugin is installed, you can go back to plugins. So once you're in the plugins page, I want you to scroll down, look at disable everything and click settings. Once you're in the settings page for this plugin, there are multiple things that are available here. Now a lot of these are available in the pro version. Now if you scroll down, there is an option for RSS feeds. So you can, you simply need to go ahead and check that. There are multiple other features that are inbuilt on WordPress that you can also disable. So you can go through this list if there's anything else that you want to disable, you can check that. And once you've selected everything that you have to disable, you can go all the way down and click on save changes. So now that this is done, you will not see the slash feed no index issue on your Google Search Console. It's a very simple way of doing it. Now, if you are a publisher who's already using a lot of plugins on WordPress and don't want to go the plugin route, there is also a way to do this manually. So in order to do this manually, you will need to have access to your WordPress installation. Now, if you do not have a file explorer plugin on your WordPress website, I would recommend you to install the WPI plugin. Now this is a file manager, I've already installed it. We've also created a video on it. If you would want to know how this works, I'll add that video in the description. But for now, in the dashboard panel, you can go over to WPIDE. We're using a file manager to access files on the WordPress server because we'll need to make changes at the file level so that these feed plugins can be disabled. So once you have access to it, you need access to WP content. So on your WordPress installation, you'll need to look for WP content. I'm already in the folder for WP content. In this folder, you should go ahead and click on themes. Now, once you double click the themes folder, you will be able to see all the themes that are installed on your WordPress server, on your WordPress website. However, these changes need to be made to the active theme only. Now, you need to know which theme is currently active. And if you have multiple themes installed, it might just be a little confusing. So I'm gonna quickly show you steps to determine which theme is currently active on your WordPress website. So for that, you would have to go to appearance and themes. So once you click on that, the first thing you see is your active theme. In my case, it's Newsmatic, which is an active theme. So that is the name I need to keep in mind because that's the folder where I have to edit the file. So now going back to WP IDE, I'm gonna go into the file explorer and select the Newsmatic theme because that's the theme that's currently active. Now, 
in order to make the change i will have to go to the functions.php page and make edits over here before i do that and this is something that i strongly recommend to everyone you first need to make a copy of this particular file the best way is to download it onto your machine so you can click the three dots over here click on download so this way you will have a backup that's stored on a machine so that in case any changes you make goes wrong you can easily revert back to a state that was working so i'm going to go ahead download this so that i have a copy of the functions.php page now once that is done i'm simply going to click on it and it's going to open up the functions.php for my theme folder now all you need to do is go to the bottom hit enter and you need to paste a code so quickly paste the code so now before i go ahead and save it i'll tell you what this code does so what it does is any page that has the slash feed url it automatically redirects the user or the crawl bot to a page without the slash feed in the url you also have the option to redirect to any other page you can do it to the home page but that's not a good practice so i would recommend you to use this code that's going to be helpful once that's done you'll hit save and you're done with it so now that we've seen both the methods of removing slash feed urls from your wordpress website i would recommend you to use only one of them the plugin one is very easy it's a risk free you don't have to uh, go around fiddling with theme codes and also uh, once you make changes to one theme file if you were to update the theme the slash feed will reoccur when you are using the manual method whereas if you are using the plugin it's not going to happen so the plugin method is slightly better it's more foolproof so uh, that's the method that i would recommend but in case you would want to take the manual route you're free to do that if you have any doubts please let me know that i'll be happy to help you